Welcome to the Crimson Engine. My name is Rubidium. Today we are talking about what directing is and what a director does. So a year and a bit ago, I did a tutorial slash YouTube video about what a producer actually does and just kind of sat there with a couple hundred views on it for six months and then suddenly it exploded getting thousands and thousands of views every week. So I figured I would do a follow-up for it um, because people are obviously curious about this stuff, about what a director actually does. I'll do one about a cinematographer as well. What a director actually does is very difficult to define because so much of what a director does on set typically is also the producer's role. Only on you know big sets or really with really supportive producers does the director just get to direct. So let's talk about what directing is. Directing is the head creative position on a film set. We are, as directors, the person responsible for the final creative outcome of the film. That means we either choose a script, adapt a script, or write a script, and then we choose to employ the rest of the head department heads. So we choose a cinematographer, the production designer, wardrobe designer, casting director, the second unit director, and probably most importantly, the actors, and pretty much every other key creative position on the film. Uh, we hire those people. We chew, We look at the people's reels, resumes, um, and they go. Uh, we bring them in for meetings. We tell them what our vision for the film is. We may, you know, a director may give the production designer, you know, another movie or a photograph or a series of photographs or a collage or a piece of music or anything that they're inspired by, anything that they're trying to infuse this story with. The department head then comes back with different options. Um, we could do it like this, we could do it like this. And then the director has to make decisions based on those options of how the department head, you know, production designer, cinematographer, wardrobe will um, use their craft, their technical know-how to fulfill that creative idea. Then the director casts the film. They look at headshots and showreels to work out who they want to audition. They look at the auditions to work out who they want to call back. And they look at the callbacks of who they want to actually cast. They then get all the actors together, do a table read, give them notes, just always sharing this creative idea and the creative vision that they have for the movie. Then they organize rehearsals. The actors come and go through the scenes. Typically the director has total freedom to change the lines of the script if they want, change where the scenes um, uh, take place, um, ch change the setting of the scenes. Then everyone shows up to set. Um, hopefully everything looks like the director wants it to look. If it doesn't, he gets to tell people to change it then you typically block the scene with the actors and the cinematographer. The cinematographer suggests where to put the camera, what lens to put on the camera, how to move the camera. The director either approves or asks them to change it. Then the cinematographer with the gaffer lights the scene. The cinematographer with the grips plan how to move the camera, whether it's on dolly track or on an arm or a movie or a handheld or a steady cam, all of which the director will supervise by watching on the monitor. Then they go ahead and eventually do a take. And now we get to the real creative power of the director, as if all of that lead up wasn't enough. The director gets to watch that take and the director now gets to say, is it what I wanted or do we do it again? And if we do it again, how do we change it? This is why cinema is such a director's medium. It's not like theater where the director rehearses the actors and then once the curtain goes up, they basically just have to watch. The director, after every take, gets to say, let's move on or let's do it again. And if we're doing it again, how are we changing it? That's an incredible power. It seems so pedestrian to us, but nothing goes forward without the, direct, without the director being happy with what they've done. If the actor can't give the performance the director wants, he gets to ask for him to try again or her to try again and again and again. If the director doesn't feel as though the actor is gonna give them what they want, the director has the power to fire that actor. This happened on Back to the Future. They'd shot a week of the film and Robert Zemeckis decided that, you know, just wasn't working. Let's shut down and get someone else. And they ended up with Michael J. Fox. The reason that the director has such power 
in cinema is that if all the individual department heads do what they think looks good, you end up with this total pastiche of these clunky elements that just don't work together. Just like if every actor directed themselves, you would get someone playing it for laughs, someone doing it super seriously, someone doing it very expressively, someone just, you know, who decides to change their lines. Like it just couldn't work. All the cogs need to move together. The cogs can't um, move in their own direction or they'll just tear themselves apart. There needs to be a unified vision for us to create a real believable world in this silly make-believe um, story so that people can, the audience can be engrossed in it, absorbed in it and get something from it. So as you just say, there is no such thing as a director of photography. I know people call themselves DPs. I know D DP cinematographers like to be called directors of photography. There is no such thing. The only person who's directing the photography on a movie is the director. The only person directing the casting on the movie is not the casting director, it's the director. There is There can only be one creative force or if you're um, co-directors, like collaborative directors, um, like the Coens or the Wachowskis, then you're making those decisions together. If the director just wants to direct the performances of the actors and leave the photography up to the cinematographer, then that person's not a director of photography. That person is a director of the film. They should be listed under director with the director who's directing the actors. That, that's, that's two sides of the same whole. And adding this imaginary credit of DP, or it's a lot easier to say than cinematographer, so that's why I use it. They're really, honestly, on a film set, there is only one director, that's the, the director. Why does the director have so much power? Why are they given so much authority? It's because they're the ones that spent the years leading up to this day working on the script, bringing, bringing the money together, bringing the team together, making all of this happen. And they're also the ones that are gonna be on this movie for another year or years afterwards, um, editing all this together, putting music to it, adding the visual effects, the special effects, adding, you know, going back and reshooting things if um, the movie doesn't work. That's my look at what a director actually does, what the director's role is. And it, they are just so murked and mired because, you know, a director typically does so many other roles like producer, sometimes cinematographer, sometimes um, actor that, you know, we forget what the job of director is. And that really is the unifying creative force of a film. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please leave your questions in the comments and I will see you next time.